So let's move ahead. Time functions. Now, suppose uh, I only have a publisher uh, that I'm trying to move, but if you have a, a cluster of, for example, eight nodes, and some of them are uh, TFTP call processing and uh, doing other jobs, right? So you need to select that. So in my case, it is uh, this publisher is used for primary call processing, used for music on hold, TFTP. Can I select this? It does not allow me. If I if I select this and proceed, right, and I click on OK. So the reason why we need to select these tasks is during the migration task, when we will configure the migration task, you know, it PCD based on best practices will give uh, a proper sequence to migrate the existing cluster. So it will first move the TFTP and then move the primary call processing and then the secondary call processing, etc. So you have you move, you have the migration done with limited impact on your business. Right, but it's okay if you if you fail to select any of this, or it is not that it is not going to. Suppose you do not select MOS for a server that is running MOS service, that does not mean it is not going to copy the existing MOS files in that cluster. It will copy everything. The only thing is the sequence uh, during migration might change. Right, so the the based on best practices, PCD is uh, uh, programmed with a logic that will provide a proper sequence for migration. Right. And that's the reason why we need to select this assign functions tab. And now your discover cluster phase is complete. Next in the inventory, you have the ESXi host option. So here you add the ESXi host server IP address where you have configured the OVA. So my ESXi host IP address is 1076.75.157. Remember to give the root username and password. Like I said, PCD needs to take control of your VMs which you have created using OVA, right? And the OVAs need to be in power off state. So PCD will then power this on and then transfer the ISO image and install install CUCM10.x. But to begin, the first thing that it is going to do, it is going to power it on. So you need to first have this in power off state, which is very important, or the PCD, uh, you know, the migration task will stop at that point. So I have added the ESXi host. Next thing that I do is I define a migration cluster under inventory, inventory clusters. This option is used to deploy a new CUCM 10.x cluster. Now, if I want to do a migration, I define migration cluster where I basically do the mapping. So this is CUCM 8.x, which I discovered, right? And the destination cluster name is CUCM 10.x. Now, this is the option where you can either do a simple migration where you retain the existing cluster network settings, or you can uh, optionally choose to deploy a new cluster with new network information. In this, in, in the simple migration phase, it is going to power off your existing cluster nodes, whereas in this case, it will deploy the new cluster without powering off your existing cluster, so the phones and all the calls will continue to work. So I'm doing a simple migration, so I'll, I'll keep this as it is, and I'll click on Next. So this is my source cluster information. Right, and now I assign destination cluster nodes. This is where I do the mapping. Right now, I had selected the ESXi. Uh, you know, I had added the ESXi to my PCD, and now it lists all the virtual machines inside my ESXi host. Right, the OVA that I deployed for this migration is CUCM Pub 10. So I'm going to select that. Okay, and I click on done. So this is how the mapping is done. If you have more clusters, you click on uh, assign destination cluster, and then you click. You get an option for next node if you have subscribers. Since I do not have any subscribers, I only have one publisher. So the mapping is done between this node and this OVA. And you click on next. You want to retain the NTP settings, or you want to change? You can make the changes here. Same thing for DNS. So I don't have to change. I don't have any DNS, so I'm, I'm clicking on finish. So 
So I have done the defined migration cluster task where I have done the mapping between the existing nodes and the destination OVAs. Once this is done, you go to task and you click on migrate and I click on add migration task. Now this is my source cluster. This is my destination cluster. Mapping is done. The source host name, this is my source a.x server publisher and this is my destination OVA. Right, and I click on next. Here I select the migration file. It's the it's nothing but the bootable ISO image, which I uploaded into the fresh install folder of uh, SFTP data store of PCD. Right, and uh, once this is done, you can choose to schedule it, or you know you can start task manually, or you can start it immediately. I want to choose immediately after completing this wizard. Specify migration procedure, like I said, it will first export data from your source cluster, which is your 8.x publisher. Then it is going to shut down the existing CCM 8.x publisher, install the destination cluster publisher, and restore the answer file, which includes the network information. It includes the uh, database and configuration information. It also includes the user-facing features. And then you click on Next. Uh, if there were multiple nodes, it would give the sequence for all these nodes. And finally, I click on Finish. So now you go under Monitoring, where you can do View Log, where, where you can check each of the, you know, uh, as it proceeds, you know, it is going to update these logs, and you can check the progress from here. And like I said, this is auto refresh, which is it is going to refresh this page automatically. And one more thing which I wanted to demonstrate here is email notification. So you can configure your uh, you know SMTP server or and your email address. So after every task, whether it is complete or it is completed with failures or it just failed, it is going to send send you an update via mail. So currently it's exporting data from your existing server and that's why this is running. The next thing is to shut it down and then install destination cluster. So during the during the boot process, the first thing that you do is you restore the network information and then when CUCM application is being installed, it will restore the configuration and user facing feature information. Hey guys, as you can see now, uh, the migration is complete. And if you check the view logs, it has successfully shut down the uh, a.x server, and it has installed the new server with the same host name and IP address, and it has restored the data successfully, which is the uh, network information, the database configuration information, and user-facing feature, and the task shows complete. Now let's go and try and access the server again. So you, you have the same passwords and everything is the same. Let's see what version it is. All right, so it's 10.x version, 10.01. All right, let's see if the devices show up. Click on fine and here, here you go. And, and if you see, the phone which was registered to my 8.x cluster has seamlessly registered now to my 10.x server having the same IP address. Right, I did not have to delete any ITL files because it uses the same set of private and public keys. Uh, and so when uh, the phone is trying to contact the 10.x cluster and it gets the new ITL file, since it is signed with the same set of uh, private and public keys uh, as an 8.x cluster, you know, the, the phone will be able to authenticate this new ITL file from 10.x cluster and accept it and then get the new configuration information and register to 10.x and you do not, like I said, you do not have to delete any ITL files, All right? Optionally, if you are having a secure cluster, uh, there are a lot of questions what we can do, how we can run. So you can actually, when you do the migrate task, there is an option where you can pause. You can, you can intentionally create a pause. So suppose you want to run the CTL client after migration of every subscriber server, right? So you can give an intentional pause and run the CTL client or you can 
once the entire migration is done, you can rerun the CTL plan provided you use the same set of e tokens. Okay, so that's about it now. So all these tasks were done. So we did the discover cluster, which is adding the publisher IP address, OS admin username and password, and PCD went ahead, discovered all the servers in that cluster, installed a COP file that will be used for migration or upgrade. Next is we added the, uh, under uh, inventory, we added the ESXi host information using root username and password, so uh, PCD has access to the OVAs. We created a migration, uh, we defined a migration cluster where we do the mapping of the MCA server and the OVA, corresponding OVA that we want to use. Last is we create a migration task where you choose the ISO and you, you basically define the time when you want to start with the migration, right? So like I said, apart from the migration, uh, PCD can also be used to do upgrade related tasks. It, you can also use it to install COP files on a cluster, uh, switch versions, reboot, change IP addresses, etc. So if you if you go here uh, in your PCD software and you go to tasks, so these are all the tasks, server readdress, server restart, readdress, install a completely new server, etc. <coughs> So if you're installing a new server, you need to first go into clusters and you define a new server and then you come to task and uh, create an installed task. So thank you everyone for listening. Uh, um, and if you have any questions, feel free to post me uh, uh, and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.